The retracting casters for my jointer and bandsaw represent the simplest retracting caster systems and the first ones that I've uh, designed. Uh, to demonstrate building retracting casters for these two units, I've removed the jointer from this jointer stand. I've mounted it upside down on my assembly table and parked the jointer in pieces to one side for the time being. The first step is making these pivot blocks, the blocks by which the stand is jacked off the floor. It's 17 inches long, 5 inch off the square angles on the ends. Notches cut out to clear this longitudinal frame member and some blind holes drilled in the back side to clear the hardware where these angles are bolted to the sides of the stand. The front cross piece needs to have notches cut for the frame members of course but also a notch cut for the extend retract pedal arm which we'll see a little, little more detail later on. Take a few strokes with a plane to chamfer the underside of the pivot blocks where the caster boards pivot. Next, a rear caster mounting pad for the fixed casters, which pivots on the rear stand, and two for the front swivel casters, two pivot blocks or caster mounting plates for the, for the front of the swivel casters. These two are joined together with some heavy duty hinges and I like this might be a little bit of overkill but I've got I used some fairly heavy duty hinges to join these pieces the caster mounting plates so on the rear casters on the rear caster board flush at the outside and in a quarter of an inch from the back edge I've installed the hinges that secure the, uh, that attach the, the front caster mounting plates to the rear caster mounting plate. And you can see I put the straps towards the rear, so it leaves me room to position the front swivel casters. Now they need to be positioned so they can swivel without touching the outside edge. And that'll leave them about an inch from the slot for the extend retract lever arm. The casters are four inch diameter rubber wheels and uh, they stand four and three quarter inches high from the base. I've chosen the fairly large wheels because the, the jointer is a pretty heavy tool and it needs large easy rolling casters if it's going to be easy, easy to move around. The casters, the swivel casters that I purchased had brakes, so it's necessary to remove the brake and cut off the small extension on the caster fork to make clearance for the casters to swivel. Well, screw the casters in place, uh, add a touch, a touch of green paint on the edges that show, uh, and I've clamped in place temporarily the extend retract arm and I just want to double check if this is going to work I've 
good at lifting a, a, about a, a quarter of an inch. Uh, and I think that's going to be satisfactor, satisfactory. Now I just have to work on the pedal and the latch that holds this with the, in the caster's extended position. I'm going to attach the uh, pedal to the arm with a T-hinge and I bent it to fit this little ramp that I've got on the top side of the extend retract lever. So I'll attach the hinge to the arm and then I'll attach this pedal to the hinge so that I can t tip it in to latch in this notch. Here's the pedal and the latch assembly. Um, the extension here is to prevent the foot pedal from flopping right over backwards. So it's got sort of limited rotation. Okay, just need to drill and install a couple of bolts. Everything seems to be working just fine. By using a couple of bolts here, I can add the washers under between, between the arm and the rear plate as necessary to, to get the right travel on the, on the arm. Center the arm and drill for the second bolt. Okay, I'm pleased with the way it works. Pedals extended. Pedals there we are, right side up again. Wheels installed and working very nicely. Wheels retracted, solid as a rock. I want to take the opportunity to, to say a word about the jointer. This is Central Machinery Jointer from Harbor Freight. Low cost jointer. Uh, I'm sure that I paid them under $200 for it some years ago. The design is probably as, as old as I am with the uh, fence attaching uh, at the end like this with sing a single control locks it for width and tilt. And uh, out of interest, I went to a, a, a collection of books here that I really value. It's a, a set of bound volumes of the Deltagram, Delta Power Tools newsletters. And back in October 1934, so the design is older than I am, October 1934, Delta introduced a six-inch jointer is very similar in design to what Harbor Freight is selling here. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm pleased with the jointer. It, it suits me and my workshop very well. Well, this is deja vu all over again. The band, band saw stand. I removed, <coughs> excuse me, 
I've removed the uh, bandsaw from the stand, turned it upside down so you can have a look at the retracting caster system. And like the jointer stand, the first part of the retracting caster system is pivot blocks for the caster mounting plates. One rear, one front. And the front one has, of course, a notch for the extend retract lever pedal arm. And in both, I drilled 5 8 blind holes so that the pivot blocks will slip over the nuts on the inside of this angle of the stand. Same thing on the back. Uh, before I drilled these holes, I used a heavy duty C clamp to pull the block against the nuts against the bolts to make an imprint so that when I took this over to the drill press I could drill in exactly the correct location for the blind relief holes. These pivot blocks are retained with uh, a couple of three quarter inch round head screws through drilled holes in the stand frame angle. Here's the casters and the caster mounting boards that I use for the bandsaw. All four are rigid, non-swiveled casters because I normally don't have to maneuver the bandsaw. I just pull it out from the wall and push it back into the storage space in a straight line. So the three inch caster wheels, three and a half inches high, and the hinges are just simply salvaged butt hinges, heavy duty door hinges. And the rear board is one piece, and the front board two pieces, with a, a notch in here for the operating lever. Here's the pedal and actuating arm installed, bolted to the rear caster mounting board. The pedal rocks to latch in the notch, to latch the casters extended, and it rocks on the end of the uh, actuating arm with a small hinge. And if you look close, I had to add a few washers here between the arm and the rear board to get the right amount of travel of the casters extended and retracted. Well, I've put my bandsaw back in the stand. And the retracting casters are working well. I use four non-swivel rigid casters simply because for the bandsaw, I simply want to pull it out from this parking spot far enough to rip long stock and clear by, clear by the tools. If you wanted to put swivel casters under here, I would, I would recommend perhaps, uh, like the jointer, perhaps swivel casters could be put on, under the front caster mounting plate. I think the back plate needs uh, two rigid casters well spaced to make the tool stable when it's up on the extended casters. You might like the uh, little drawer that I've fitted in here on, on top of the casters and below the motor. So I'm a drawer for some of the bandsaw accessories. And it incorporates a plate to kind of cover up the front of the stand. <laughs> 